Aldous Leonard Huxley, the 26th of July 1894 to the 22nd of November 1963, was an English writer, novelist, philosopher, and prominent member of the Huxley family. He graduated from Balliol College at the University of Oxford with a first-class honors degree in English literature. The author of nearly 50 books, Huxley was best known for his novels among them Brave New World, set in a dystopian future, for non-fiction works, such as The Doors of Perception, in which he recalls his experiences taking psychedelic drugs, and for his wide-ranging essays. Early in his career, Huxley published short stories and poetry, and edited the literary magazine Oxford Poetry. He went on to publish travel writing, film stories, satire, and screenplays. He spent the latter part of his life in the United States, living in Los Angeles from 1937 until his death. Huxley was a humanist and pacifist. He became interested in spiritual subjects such as parapsychology and philosophical mysticism, and in particular universalism. By the end of his life, Huxley was widely acknowledged as one of the preeminent intellectuals of his time. He was nominated for the Nobel Prize in Literature seven times. In 1962, a year before he died, Huxley was elected Companion of Literature by the Royal Society of Literature. Early life Huxley was born in Godalming, Surrey, England, in 1894. He was the third son of the writer and schoolmaster Leonard Huxley, who edited Cornhill magazine, and his first wife, Julia Arnold, who founded Pryor's Field School. Julia was the niece of poet and critic Matthew Arnold and the sister of Mrs. Humphrey Ward. Aldous was the grandson of Thomas Henry Huxley, the zoologist, agnostic, and controversialist, Darwin's bulldog. His brother Julian Huxley and half-brother Andrew Huxley also became outstanding biologists. Aldous had another brother, Noel Trevelyan Huxley (1891–1914), who committed suicide after a period of clinical depression. As a child, Huxley's nickname was Ogie, short for ogre. He was described by his brother Julian as someone who frequently contemplated the strangeness of things. According to his cousin and contemporary, Gervis Huxley, he had an early interest in drawing. Huxley's education began in his father's well equipped botanical laboratory, after which he enrolled at Hillside School near Godalming. He was taught there by his own mother for several years until she became terminally ill. After Hillside, he went on to Eton College. His mother died in 1908 when he was 14. In 1911, he contracted the eye disease keratitis punctata, which left him practically blind for two to three years. This ended his early dreams of becoming a doctor. In October 1913, Huxley entered Balliol College, Oxford, where he studied English literature. In January 1916, he volunteered for the British Army in the Great War, however was rejected on health grounds, being half-blind in one eye. His eyesight later partly recovered. In 1916 he edited Oxford Poetry and in June of that year graduated B.A. with first-class honors. His brother Julian wrote, I believe his blindness was a blessing in disguise. For one thing, it put paid to his idea of taking up medicine as a career. His uniqueness lay in his universalism. He was able to take all knowledge for his province. Following his years at Balliol, Huxley, being financially indebted to his father, decided to find employment. From April to July 1917, he was in charge of ordering supplies at the Air Ministry. He taught French for a year at Eton, where Eric Blair who was to take the pen name George Orwell and Stephen Runciman were among his pupils. He was mainly remembered as being an incompetent schoolmaster unable to keep order in class. Nevertheless, Blair and others spoke highly of his excellent command of language. Significantly, Huxley also worked for a time during the 1920s at Brunner and Mond, an advanced chemical plant in Billingham in County Durham, northeast England. According to the introduction to the latest edition of his science fiction novel Brave New World, 1932, the experience he had there of an ordered universe in a world of planless incoherence was an important source for the novel. Topic. Career Huxley completed his first unpublished novel at the age of 17 and began writing seriously in his early twenties, establishing himself as a successful writer and social satirist. 
His first published novels were Social Satires, Chrome Yellow 1921, Antic Hay 1923, Those Barren Leaves 1925, and Point Counterpoint 1928. Brave New World was Huxley's fifth novel and first dystopian work. In the 1920s he was also a contributor to Vanity Fair and British Vogue magazines. <laughs> Bloomsbury set During World War I, Huxley spent much of his time at Garsington Manor near Oxford, home of Lady Adeline Morell, working as a farm labourer. There he met several Bloomsbury figures, including Bertrand Russell, Alfred North Whitehead, and Clive Bell. Later, in Chrome Yellow 1921, he caricatured the Garsington lifestyle. Jobs were very scarce, but in 1919 John Middleton Murray was reorganising the Athenaeum and invited Huxley to join the staff. He accepted immediately, and quickly married the Belgian refugee Maria N. Wise, also at Garsington. They lived with their young son in Italy part of the time during the 1920s, where Huxley would visit his friend D. H. Lawrence. Following Lawrence's death in 1930, Huxley edited Lawrence's Letters 1932. Works of this period included important novels on the dehumanizing aspects of scientific progress, most famously Brave New World, and on pacifist themes for example, Eyeless in Gaza. In Brave New World, set in a dystopian London, Huxley portrays a society operating on the principles of mass production and Pavlovian conditioning. Huxley was strongly influenced by F. Matthias Alexander and included him as a character in Eyeless in Gaza. Starting from this period, Huxley began to write and edit non-fiction works on pacifist issues, including Ends and Means, an Encyclopedia of Pacifism, and Pacifism and Philosophy, and was an active member of the Peace Pledge Union. Topic. United States In 1937 Huxley moved to Hollywood with his wife Maria, son Matthew Huxley, and friend Gerald Hurd. He lived in the U.S., mainly in Southern California, until his death, and also for a time in Taos, New Mexico, where he wrote Ends and Means published in 1937. The book contains tracts on war, religion, nationalism and ethics. Heard introduced Huxley to Vedanta Upanishad-centered philosophy, meditation, and vegetarianism through the principle of ahimsa. In 1938, Huxley befriended Jiddu Krishnamurti, whose teachings he greatly admired. Huxley and Krishnamurti entered into an enduring exchange sometimes edging on debate over many years, with Krishnamurti representing the more rarefied, detached, ivory tower perspective and Huxley, with his pragmatic concerns, the more socially and historically informed position. Huxley provided an introduction to Krishnamurti's quintessential statement, The First and Last Freedom 1954. Huxley also became a Vedantist in the circle of Hindu Swami Prabhavananda, and introduced Christopher Isherwood to this circle. Not long after, Huxley wrote his book on widely held spiritual values and ideas, The Perennial Philosophy, which discussed the teachings of renowned mystics of the world. Huxley's book affirmed a sensibility that insists there are realities beyond the generally accepted five senses, and that there is genuine meaning for humans beyond both sensual satisfactions and sentimentalities. Huxley became a close friend of Remsen Byrd, president of Occidental College. He spent much time at the college, which is in the Eagle Rock neighborhood of Los Angeles. The college appears as Tazana College in his satirical novel After Many a Summer 1939. The novel won Huxley a British Literary Award, the 1939 James Tate Black Memorial Prize for Fiction. Huxley also incorporated Bird into the novel. During this period, Huxley earned a substantial income as a Hollywood screenwriter. Christopher Isherwood, in his autobiography My Guru and His Disciple, states that Huxley earned more than $3,000 per week an enormous sum in those days as a screenwriter, and that he used much of it to transport Jewish and left-wing writer and artist refugees from Hitler's Germany to the U.S. In March 1938, his friend Anita Luz, a novelist and screenwriter, put him in touch with Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer who hired Huxley for Madame Curie, which was originally to star Greta Garbo and be directed by George Cukor. Eventually, the film was completed by MGM in 1943 with a different director and cast. Huxley received screen credit for Pride and Prejudice 1940 and was paid for his work on a number of other films, including Jane Eyre 1944. 
Huxley was commissioned by Walt Disney in 1945 to write a script based on Alice's Adventures in Wonderland and the biography of the story's author, Lewis Carroll. The script was not used, however, Huxley wrote an introduction to the posthumous publication of J. D. Onwin's 1940 book Hapuja or the Sexual and Economic Foundations of a New Society. On 21 October 1949, Huxley wrote to George Orwell, author of 1984, congratulating him on how fine and how profoundly important the book is. In his letter to Orwell, he predicted, Within the next generation I believe that the world's leaders will discover that infant conditioning and narco-hypnosis are more efficient, as instruments of government, than clubs and prisons, and that the lust for power can be just as completely satisfied by suggesting people into loving their servitude as by flogging them and kicking them into obedience. Huxley had deeply felt apprehensions about the future the developed world might make for itself. From these, he made some warnings in his writings and talks. In a 1958 televised interview conducted by journalist Mike Wallace, Huxley outlined several major concerns, the difficulties and dangers of world overpopulation, the tendency toward distinctly hierarchical social organization, the crucial importance of evaluating the use of technology in mass societies susceptible to persuasion, the tendency to promote modern politicians to a naive public as well-marketed commodities. Post-World War II. In 1953 Huxley and Maria applied for United States citizenship and presented themselves for examination. When Huxley refused to bear arms for the U.S. and would not state that his objections were based on religious ideals, the only excuse allowed under the McCarran Act, the judge had to adjourn the proceedings. He withdrew his application. Nevertheless, he remained in the U.S. In 1959 Huxley turned down an offer of a Knight Bachelor by the Macmillan government without putting forward a reason. His brother Julian had been knighted in 1958, while another brother Andrew would be knighted in 1974. <laughs> <laughs> Association with Vedanta Beginning in 1939 and continuing until his death in 1963, Huxley had an extensive association with the Vedanta Society of Southern California, founded and headed by Swami Prabhavananda. Together with Gerald Hurd, Christopher Isherwood, and other followers he was initiated by the Swami and was taught meditation and spiritual practices. In 1944 Huxley wrote the introduction to the Bhagavad Gita, the Song of God. Translated by Swami Prabhavananda and Christopher Isherwood, which was published by the Vedanta Society of Southern California. From 1941 until 1960, Huxley contributed 48 articles to Vedanta and the West, published by the Society. He also served on the editorial board with Isherwood, Hurd, and playwright John Van Druten from 1951 through 1962. Huxley also occasionally lectured at the Hollywood and Santa Barbara Vedanta temples. Two of those lectures have been released on CD, Knowledge and Understanding and Who Are We, from 1955. Nonetheless, Huxley's agnosticism, together with his speculative propensity, made it difficult for him to fully embrace any form of institutionalized religion. In the spring of 1953, Huxley had his first experience with psychedelic drugs, in this case, mescaline. Huxley had initiated a correspondence with Dr. Humphrey Osmond, a British psychiatrist then employed in a Canadian institution, and eventually asked him to supply a dose of mescaline. Osmond obliged and supervised Huxley's session in Southern California. After the publication of The Doors of Perception, in which he recounted this experience, Huxley and Swami Prabhavananda disagreed about the meaning and importance of the psychedelic drug experience, which may have caused the relationship to cool, but Huxley continued to write articles for the Society's journal, lecture at the temple, and attend social functions. Eyesight <inaudible> 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 There are differing accounts about the details of the quality of Huxley's eyesight at specific points in his life. About 1939 Huxley encountered the Bates method for better eyesight, and a teacher, Margaret Darst Corbett, who was able to teach the method to him. In 1940, Huxley relocated from Hollywood to a 40-acre ranchito in the high desert hamlet of Llano, California, in northern Los Angeles County. Huxley then said that his sight improved dramatically with the Bates method and the extreme and pure natural lighting of the southwestern American desert. 
He reported that, for the first time in more than 25 years, he was able to read without glasses and without strain. He even tried driving a car along the dirt road beside the ranch. He wrote a book about his successes with the Bates Method, The Art of Seeing, which was published in 1942 US, 1943 UK. The book contained some generally disputed theories, and its publication created a growing degree of popular controversy about Huxley's eyesight. It was, and is, widely believed that Huxley was nearly blind since the illness in his teens, despite the partial recovery that had enabled him to study at Oxford. For example, some ten years after publication of The Art of Seeing, in 1952, Bennett Cerf was present when Huxley spoke at a Hollywood banquet, wearing no glasses and apparently reading his paper from the lectern without difficulty, then suddenly he faltered, and the disturbing truth became obvious. He wasn't reading his address at all. He had learned it by heart. To refresh his memory he brought the paper closer and closer to his eyes. When it was only an inch or so away he still couldn't read it, and had to fish for a magnifying glass in his pocket to make the typing visible to him. It was an agonizing moment. Brazilian author João Ubaldo Ribeiro, who as a young journalist spent several evenings in the Huxley's company in the late 1950s, wrote that Huxley had said to him, with a wry smile, I can hardly see at all. And I don't give a damn, really. Ribeiro then proceeds to confirm Bennett Cerf's experience, as described above. On the other hand, Huxley's second wife, Laura Archera, would later emphasize in her biographical account, this timeless moment, one of the great achievements of his life, that of having regained his sight. After revealing a letter she wrote to the Los Angeles Times disclaiming the label of Huxley as a poor fellow who can hardly see, by Walter C. Alvarez, she tempered this. Although I feel it was an injustice to treat Aldous as though he were blind, it is true there were many indications of his impaired vision. For instance, although Aldous did not wear glasses, he would quite often use a magnifying lens." Laura Huxley proceeded to elaborate a few nuances of inconsistency peculiar to Huxley's vision. Her account, in this respect, is discernibly congruent with the following sample of Huxley's own words from The Art of Seeing. The most characteristic fact about the functioning of the total organism, or any part of the organism, is that it is not constant, but highly variable. Nevertheless, the topic of Huxley's eyesight continues to endure similar, significant controversy, regardless of how trivial a subject matter it might initially appear. American popular science author Stephen Johnson, in his book Mind Wide Open, quotes Huxley about his difficulties with visual encoding. I am and, for as long as I can remember, I have always been a poor visualizer. Words, even the pregnant words of poets, do not evoke pictures in my mind. No hypnagogic visions greet me on the verge of sleep. When I recall something, the memory does not present itself to me as a vividly seen event or object. By an effort of the will, I can evoke a not very vivid image of what happened yesterday afternoon. Personal life Huxley married Maria N. Wise the 10th of September 1899 to the 12th of February 1955, a Belgian he met at Garsington, Oxfordshire, in 1919. They had one child, Matthew Huxley the 19th of April 1920 to the 10th of February 2005, who had a career as an author, anthropologist, and prominent epidemiologist. In 1955, Maria Huxley died of cancer. In 1956, Huxley married Laura Archera, 1911 to 2007, also an author as well as a violinist and psychotherapist. She wrote *This Timeless Moment*, a biography of Huxley. She told the story of their marriage through Mary Ann Braubach's 2010 documentary, Huxley on Huxley. In 1960 Aldous Huxley was diagnosed with laryngeal cancer and, in the years that followed, with his health deteriorating, he wrote the utopian novel Island, and gave lectures on human potentialities, both at the University of California's San Francisco Medical Center and at the Esalen Institute. These lectures were fundamental to the beginning of the human potential movement. Huxley was a close friend of Jiddu Krishnamurti and Rosalind Rahagopal and was involved in the creation of the Happy Valley School, now Besant Hill School of Happy Valley, in Ojai, California. The most substantial collection of Huxley's few remaining papers, following the destruction of Most in a Fire, is at the Library of the University of California, Los Angeles. 
Some are also at the Stanford University Libraries. On the 9th of April 1962, Huxley was informed he was elected Companion of Literature by the Royal Society of Literature, the senior literary organization in Britain, and he accepted the title via letter on the 28th of April 1962. The correspondence between Huxley and the Society are kept at the Cambridge University Library. The Society invited Huxley to appear at a banquet and give a lecture at Somerset House, London in June 1963. Huxley wrote a draft of the speech he intended to give at the Society, however, his deteriorating health meant he was not able to attend. Topic death on his deathbed, unable to speak owing to advanced laryngeal cancer, Huxley made a written request to his wife Laura for LSD, 100 micrograms, intramuscular. According to her account of his death in this timeless moment, she obliged with an injection at 11:20 a.m. and a second dose an hour later. Huxley died aged 69 at 5:20 p.m. Los Angeles time on the 22nd of November 1963. Media coverage of Huxley's death, as with that of the author C.S. Lewis, was overshadowed by the assassination assassination of U.S. President John F. Kennedy on the same day. In an article for New York Magazine titled, The Eclipsed Celebrity Death Club, Christopher Bonanos wrote, The championship trophy for badly timed death, though, goes to a pair of British writers. Aldous Huxley, the author of Brave New World, died the same day as C.S. Lewis, who wrote the Chronicles of Narnia series. Unfortunately for both of their legacies, that day was November 22, 1963, just as John Kennedy's motorcade passed the Texas School Book Depository. Huxley, at least, made it interesting. At his request, his wife shot him up with LSD a couple of hours before the end, and he tripped his way out of this world. This coincidence served as the basis for Peter Kreeft's book Between Heaven and Hell, a dialogue somewhere beyond death with John F. Kennedy, C.S. Lewis, and Aldous Huxley, which imagines a conversation among the three men taking place in purgatory following their deaths. Huxley's memorial service took place in London in December 1963. It was led by his older brother Julian, and on 27 October 1971 his ashes were interred in the family grave at the Watts Cemetery, home of the Watts Mortuary Chapel in Compton, Guilford, Surrey, England. Huxley had been a longtime friend of Russian composer Igor Stravinsky, who later dedicated his last orchestral composition to Huxley. Stravinsky began variations in Santa Fe, New Mexico, in July 1963, and completed the composition in Hollywood on 28 October 1964. It was first performed in Chicago on 17 April 1965, by the Chicago Symphony Orchestra conducted by Robert Kraft. Topic Awards 1939 James Tate Black Memorial Prize for After Many a Summer Dies the Swan 1959 American Academy of Arts and Letters Award of Merit for Brave New World 1962 Companion of Literature Royal Society of Literature Topic Film adaptations of Huxley's work 1968 Point Counterpoint BBC miniseries by Simon Raven 1971 The Devils The Devils of Loudon adapted by Ken Russell 1980 Brave New World American TV adaptation 1998 Brave New World American TV adaptation Topic Works Novels 1921 Chrome Yellow 1923 Antic Hay 1925 Those Barren Leaves 1928 Point Counterpoint 1932 Brave New World 1936 Eyeless in Gaza 1939 After Many a Summer 1944 Time Must Have a Stop 1948 Ape and Essence 1952 The Devils of Loudoun 1955 The Genius and the Goddess 1962 Island Short Story Collections 1920 Limbo 1922 Mortal Coils 1924 Little Mexican US title, Young Archimedes 1926 Two or Three Graces 1930 Brief Candles 1944 Collected Short Stories Jacob's Hands, a fable co-written with Christopher Isherwood, discovered 1997 Poetry Collections 1916 Oxford Poetry Magazine Editor 1916 The Burning Wheel 1917 Jonah 
1918 The Defeat of Youth and Other Poems 1920 Lita 1925 Selected Poems 1929 Arabia in Felix and Other Poems 1931 The Cicadas and Other Poems 1971 Collected Poems Essay Collections 1923 On the Margin 1925 Along the Road 1926 Essays New and Old 1927 Proper Studies 1929 Do What You Will Essays, Full Text 1930 Vulgarity in Literature 1931 Music at Night 1932 Texts and Pretexts 1936 The Olive Tree and Other Essays Full Text 1937 Ends and Means Reissued by Transaction Publishers 2012, with a new introduction, Pacifism and Non-Attachment, by Howard G. Schneiderman 1940 Words and Their Meanings 1945 The Perennial Philosophy 1946 Science, Liberty and Peace 1950 Themes and Variations 1954 The Doors of Perception 1956 Heaven and Hell 1956 Adonis and the Alphabet US title Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow 1958 Collected Essays 1958 Brave New World Revisited 1960 On Art and Artists 1963 Literature and Science 1977 Moksha, Writings on Psychedelics and the Visionary Experience 1931-63 1977 The Human Situation, Lectures at Santa Barbara, 1959 Screenplays Brave New World Ape and Essence 1940 Pride and Prejudice collaboration. 1943 Madame Curie collaboration. 1944 Jane Eyre collaboration with John Houseman 1947 A Woman's Vengeance 1950 Prelude to Fame 1951 Original Screenplay rejected for Disney's animated Alice in Wonderland 1971 Eyeless in Gaza BBC miniseries in collaboration with Robin Chapman Travel Books 1925 Along the Road, Notes and Essays of a Tourist 1926 Jesting Pilot, The Diary of a Journey 1934 Beyond the Mexique Bay, A Traveler's Journey Children's Fiction 1967 The Crows of Pear Blossom Drama 1924 The Discovery adapted from Francis Sheridan 1931 The World of Light full text 1948 Mortal Coils, a play stage version of the Joconda Smile 1958 The Genius and the Goddess stage version, co-written with Betty Wendell 1967 The Ambassador of Captropedia 2000 Now More Than Ever Lost Play Discovered by the Department of English Literature, University of Munster, Germany Articles written for Vedanta and the West 1949. Art and Religion 1950. Forward to an Essay on the Indian Philosophy of Peace 1955. Who Are We? 1957. The Inanimate is Alive 1960. Symbol and Immediate Experience", Audio Recordings 1955 Knowledge and Understanding 1955 Who Are We? Other 1936 Pacifism and Philosophy 1937 An Encyclopedia of Pacifism editor, Full Text 1941 Gray Eminence 1942 The Art of Seeing Exploration of Bates' Method of Vision Improvement 1953 The Devils of Loudoun 1962 The Politics of Ecology 2007 Selected Letters Topic. See also Aldous Huxley Portal Topic. References Topic. Sources Topic. Further reading Topic. External links Wikilevras has original media or text related to this article, Aldous Huxley in the public domain in South Korea Works by Aldous Huxley at Project Gutenberg 
Works by or about Aldous Huxley at Internet Archive Works by Aldous Leonard Huxley at Faded Page Canada. Works by Aldous Huxley at LibriVox Public Domain Audiobooks Works by Aldous Huxley at Open Library Complete works of Aldous Huxley Portraits at the National Portrait Gallery Aldous Huxley on IMDb Raymond Fraser, George Wicks Spring 1960 Interview, Aldous Huxley, The Art of Fiction No. 24 The Paris Review BBC Discussion Programme in Our Time Brave New World. Huxley and the Novel. 9 April 2009. Audio, 45 minutes. BBC in Their Own Words series. 12 October 1958. Video, 12 minutes. The Ultimate Revolution. Talk at UC Berkeley, 20 March 1962. Huxley interviewed on the Mike Wallace interview 18 May 1958. Video. Center for Huxley Research. Aldous Huxley Papers at University of California, Los Angeles Library Special Collections.